OK, I've introduced this notion of effective conductance, and um, I said it was an important quantity, but I think you've actually seen it before. I suspect you have. Let's see. Let's do a simple example then. So let's pick two nodes, simple situation with two nodes, one and two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two edges between them, edge A and edge B. And I'm going to let the conductance of edge A, is a conductor joining A, one and two, be, have conductor CA and CB will be the conductance of edge B. And you remember what this idea was of convective conductance is um, I really wanted to uh, kind of approximate that complicated situation where there's two edges, okay, by kind of a single edge that I, sh I draw it as a box, right, because I kind of want to encapsulate those complications of two edges in a single edge, which is my box now. Think of it as a single conductor, and it's going to have an effective conductance, and that's the number that I'm looking for here. Okay, so that's the aim of the game. We're trying to find the effective conductance um, of this situation. So there's our original graph. We know how to deal with these now. Uh, it's, it's a circuit. It's two terminals connected by two edges, but it's got an incidence matrix. Okay, uh, let's write it down. It's got nodes one and nodes two. They're my labels of the columns, and it's got edges A and B. So it's two by two incidence matrix. And let's draw these arrows on. OK, that's up to me. Well, if that's the case, then it means that uh, node uh, edge A is coming out of node 1 and into node 2, and edge B is coming out of node 1 and into node 2. So that's my incidence matrix. Now, you recall, in the last lecture, I decided that the net current uh, out of each node is given by a transpose C A times the vector of potentials, the, the voltages of the nodes. And what I want to do is, of course, remember, if I'm going to work out the effective conductance, it's the, it's the current into node 1, or, or rather, the current out of node 1, sorry, when it's set to be unit voltage, and in this case, node 2 is grounded. I don't have any other choice. Sorry, that should be a 2. There's no choice other choice here, because these are the only two nodes. OK, now if that's the case, then this thing will be, by definition, CEF, and we know that it's got to be minus CEF. We know that, by the way, because we know that F transpose X0 has to be 0, where X0 is this uh, right null vector, which is very clear that this is a right null vector of R. A. There's A in the corner there. OK, now, what's this uh, quantity here? Well, I think this is just this, isn't it? And then C is this conductance matrix that I just introduced. And in this case, of course, it's just a 2 by 2 diagonal matrix with these two elements uh, on the diagonal. And then we write down A again. OK, and then X is 1, 0. OK. So I'm going to do this in stages. Let me work out, uh, let me work out actually what these two are here, the product of these two. Don't I get minus CA, CA, minus CB, CB. I've just worked out those two. And now let me work out these. Don't I get um, minus 1, minus 1. So if I now do that multiplication, I think I get CA plus CB minus CA minus CB. Oh my goodness. So therefore CF, my CF look is this. And of course, consistently, those are the minus of what I get. So CEF is CA plus CB. That's a beautiful uh, result. It says that the effective conductance of two conductors in parallel, when I say in parallel, I simply mean that they're two edges connecting the same nodes. So two conductors in parallel, you just add up. You just add up the um, conductances of each of the edges to get the effective conductance. Interesting. Let's do something else. Let's suppose now that we have this 
Different situation, I'm going to have three nodes now. Let's call them one, two and three. And I'm going to have an edge A between one and two and an edge B between two and three. Again, this is going to be a conductance CA and CB. OK, and let's draw these arrows on. And again, um, think of it this way. I basically want to draw a box around these uh, and think of it as a single conductor joining one and three. So in particular, I want to be able to set this to one and x3 to 0 and find out what the current flowing through there is to find out what um, is basically the effective conductance. Let's do the same as we just did. We know how to do this now. We write down our incidence matrix. Now, it looks to me like there's a little it's a different shape to before because I've got one, two and three nodes and I've still got two edges, A and B. So it's a, uh, it's a two by three matrix now, M by M, M is two. Let's work out what the instance matrix is. Well, uh, edge A comes out of node one, goes into node two and doesn't go near node three. And edge B doesn't go near node one, but comes out of node two and into node three. OK, let's, let's think about our F matrix now, our F vector. We know from the general theory that it's this, OK? Right, well, let's write down, um, and, but, well, let's think about F. F, of course, if we're going to have unit potential there and uh, ground this one, F, and we're going to have, by the way, Kirchhoff's current law holding here, F is going to be my CEF by definition. Kirchhoff current law tells me that there's no net uh, current out of node 2. And then node 3 must be minus CEF, again, for the reason that we need F naught transpose, sorry, F transpose X naught to be 0, where now X naught is 1, 1, 1. OK. Right, that's from the, from the, we already know to expect that. So let's just write down a transpose. Isn't that just this? CA again is just CACB. And then there's my, and my X now is one. And then I don't know the voltage X2, so let's call it X2 and then zero. OK, so maybe let's do what we did before and multiply these two together. Don't we get minus CA, CA, 0, and then 0, minus CB, CB? And then let's multiply these two together. And don't we get minus 1 plus X2? And minus x2. OK, and then let's multiply got some space here. So let's multiply these two together. Looks like we get, isn't it CA times 1 minus x2? I think we get CA x2 minus 1 plus CB x2. And then finally, um, we get minus CB x2. OK. Now, let's solve that. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, let's, this is three equations. So let's look at this one in the middle. That tells us, so the middle equation tells us that, doesn't it tell us that CA times 1 minus x2, I'm just rearranging it in my head, is CB times x2. OK, because this thing over here is 0. OK, so let me just rearrange that uh, to, to find x2. It tells me that CA um, is equal to CA plus CB x2. I'm not just doing this in my head. I hope I'm not making any mistakes. So doesn't that tell me that x2, the thing that I didn't know, is actually CA over 
CA plus CB. Interesting, I've already worked out what the, the, the voltage is at the middle node. And now all I need to do is to, in fact, it's easier actually, look, to work out what minus CEF is because it's CB times X2. So uh, minus CEF, this is the third component. Minus CF is minus CB times X2, which tells us then that CEF, which is the thing I'm looking for, is CA, CB, the minus signs cancel, over CA plus CB. Oh my goodness. These are two conductors. We call this in series because basically um, it's one conductor followed by another one. Okay, and I've just shown you that the effective conductance of a conductor CA in series with a conductor, a conductor, conductor CB is actually the product of those conductances divided by the sum, sum of the conductances. Now, I just want to show you uh, something that you might be more familiar with. Uh, depending on who your high school uh, physics teacher was, uh, you may or may not have introduced the idea of a notion of resistance instead of conductance. Now, the resistance of an edge, edge A, say, is uh, one over, this is the definition, it's one over the conductance. Okay, I, I prefer conductances, okay. But some people prefer resistances, they're related by this simple rule. Now, by analogy, effective resistance is defined to be one over the effective conductance. And I've just worked out the effective conductance. So for, for two uh, conductors, or people call them resistors sometimes, it's just depending on what your viewpoint is, resistors in series, we know now that C, CF is the product of the conductances over the sum of the conductances. So consequently, by this, the effective resistance is one over that, which is CA plus CB over CA, CB, right? Which you can just simplify, look, to be this. And then that, of course, is just RB plus RA, because RB is one over CB and R. A is 1 over CA. So this says the rule that you might have seen before in uh, high school physics, that if you've got two resistors in series, you just add up the individual um, resistances to get the effective resistance of these two resistors in series. Okay. And actually, it's interesting because uh, the first example I did today was two uh, conductors or, or resistors in parallel and if they're in parallel it's the conductances that add up to give you um, the, the effective conductance there and you can consequently invert that formula if you want to rewrite it in terms of resistances and you'll get some other law that you would have written down for two resistors in parallel uh, if you did high school physics. Okay, so these two little rules of thumb uh, are actually just basic uh, results that are the simple examples that follow from the framework based on the incidence matrix and this weighted Laplacian that we've that we built up. And we're going to see we're going to make use of these little formulas uh, in what's to follow.